back for more of How to Fortress Your Dwarves. This is Amphilion and, um, huh. Yeah, so I was kind of prepping for the engineering and mechanics type video, and the dwarf liaison caravan type people showed up again. So I was like, alright, I don't need to record that at all. Um, unfortunately for me, they brought along their buddies, the goblins, and I apparently have run into my first goblin invasion. Well, they mostly came after the caravan guys, but uh, they're not picky about who they'll attack and kill. So here I'm trying to set up the military to go take care of these guys. Unfortunately, they're not trained very well. They're still all recruits. Um, I'm not used to really having these guys show up this early. I think it's like maybe the second year. It, mostly when you, at least on the older versions, when you played, the goblins wouldn't show up for at least you know two or three years, unless your value was just sky high, or you were like right next to a goblin base, which could might very well be in this case. But um, fortunately for me, I happen to have the caravan soldiers helping me out here. They start the. They usually bring with them their own guard. They'll have a few well, well, not well trained, but trained well enough soldiers that can protect them from a few goblins. Unfortunately, I've already lost a couple of my own recruits in the process. Uh, when you really need to get some guys back, your best option is to load up on miners, put them in. That eh, does kind of suck if they get killed, but they do have at least training with their particular weapon, and they have their own weapon by default, since they're carrying picks already. They also can generally have a better strength than most your common goblins are going to, or your goblin dwarves are going to have, because they're always mining and always working. So, if you really come into a tight spot, they're usually your best guys. You'll notice that my dwarves are all kind of milling about right there at the entrance, and it's because things that get dropped when you start killing off guys, everything that drops immediately gets put on the queue, as far as if it's in your inside your base anyway, immediately gets put on the queue as being an object worth picking up, and dwarves will like immediately start gravitating towards picking that crap up. Now you'll notice anything that's kind of outside all gets dropped, or all the loot anyway that was dropped off the caravans and such does get put into uh, does get forbidden and it's forbidden by default because essentially if combat's going on your dwarves will tend to run out and try to pick stuff up off the ground because it becomes a pickable item, lootable item and you don't really want your dwarves to do that we will show off the the orders the set orders in you in a future video but you don't really want to tinker with the picking up, or it's called forbid, forbid items on deaths or something like that. Um, it, right, like I said, right now, unless you have well-trained guys that can handle anything that's coming towards your fortress, I would leave that off. That way, uh, you don't end up with any dwarves getting killed accidentally by odds and ends like that. You'll notice that one of the Merchants happen to actually make it into the depot there. He's loaded some goods. And I've also even started bringing some goods up. You'll notice, however, that he lost five of his buddies. I lost three guys. There's a merchant horse. And there's still one goblin left left running around somewhere, but I think he escapes. Which is alright. I mean we, we did manage to kill off a decent amount of goblins. And we pinned it our base long enough to get ourselves back in the clear, which is always good. You don't, you really don't want to leave those guys hanging around, or you don't want to you know, go back to business until everything's taken care of. Otherwise, your doors will start wandering out like they were, you know, getting water and hunting, fishing, all that kind of stuff, and they'll end up running into guys again. You don't want that. You don't want to lose more doors than you have to. Again, a, a lot of, especially since the, those guys came in with the caravan and managed to kill off a bunch of the caravan guys, you want to make sure you go around and start uh, looking at all the items that they dropped and start 
making sure they're not forbidden anymore. Because, especially with the caravans, they bring a lot of foodstuffs. They'll bring a lot of uh, decaying, or uh, stuff that can decay, perishable goods. And you don't want that stuff going bad inside your base. Essentially what will happen is you'll, it'll start to rot. If it's not outdoors, it'll produce uh, miasma, and uh, the miasma will, uh, miasma, miasma, whatever, uh, it'll start to produce a cloud of funk that your dwarves just do not like. And especially if you're dealing with a lot of combat and dwarves are already on edge, so, something as simple as the miasma will kind of catch them, and sometimes you can have potential virals start because of such things, which is not very good. Not good for the health of your fortress, anyway. Tantrum's files are something you kind of get into later, if it happens. Essentially, it's if dwarves are right there at the very edge of being so pissed off that they don't want to cooperate anymore, they will start throwing a tantrum. And that essentially means they become uncontrollable, they will start fighting with anybody, break any random objects around them. So they will essentially start destroying the fortress. And the problem is that they can also destroy things that other dwarves might like. Uh, they can also cause you know other dwarves to, to cheater right off that edge and become just like them and go into a tangent as well. Tangent spirals are when your entire fortress just kind of starts falling to shit because of such you know tantrums. Everybody starts breaking everything, getting in fights, punching people. It generally kind of is a bad thing to have happen, and it's one of the more common ways to lose a fortune, more or less. You can still recover from it a lot of times, but it can take a lot of work. Kind of ass ass assessing the damage that we're taking here, and making sure our guys are going to work on taking care of the wounded that we've got. There's a lot of blood, and you'll notice that, especially once combat starts to get more calm in place, and you start to get a lot more fighting, a lot more invaders. Um, there's a lot of areas just covered in blood, and it just gets tracked everywhere. Inside your fortress, your dwarves will actually start taking care of it, they'll clean it up, especially if you have a lot of soap. But um, until then, I guess we kind of live with this. New red paint job acquired by accident. However, we did have acquired by accident a lot of other items and some of the stuff could have been handy. Not that we intentionally did any of this. Uh, it's usually not a good idea to let your caravan be killed too often. There is a good chance that that'll come back and bite you in the ass. You might have your caravan might stop showing up after a while if it happens too many times. And even worse, you might end up losing. You might, I, you you generally will end up losing uh, the migrants before you'll start losing the caravans. Uh, if it becomes too dangerous an area, your dwarves will stop migrating into your fortress because they know the reputation. I haven't had any care. I, usually, I'm pretty good about protecting my fortresses, so I haven't lost. Two, so, so many caravans that you know they stopped coming all together, but it can happen. Now you'll notice here I didn't have a weapon armor uh, stockpile before this, and I generally like to put them near my training areas so that way my military can have access to all the gear that I pick up. Makes it a lot easier to re equip them, get them better equipped, get them ready to train, and all that. It's just also more difficult to move everything up there. Because I usually, I like to keep my training areas on the ground floor, the, near the entrance. That way my dwarves don't have too far to travel to get to defending the guys defending against the invaders. And here I start actually preparing for the mechanics and engineering video, which will be the next one down the line. I might have to reshoot it. I, I had actually already uh, recorded it, but, well, I, I might, I'm gonna probably upload it anyway. There's a, bit, there's a bit of a glitch that happens, and in fact, most of this stuff that happens here 
doesn't have any real impact on the fortress. Because, well, the fortress just crashed, so I kind of lost all the goods that I just looted here. But, hey, I it might actually end, it might end up happening again if the caravan shows up and the goblin attack. But, this at least gives you a good idea of what you need to do, what you need to take care of when an invasion does happen. Uh, my, I would probably suggest you get your guys training a lot earlier and make sure that they're doing nothing but training. I, I, I'm, like I said, I'm kind of used to the earlier versions of Dwarf Fortress where the training would go by a lot quicker. And yeah, this is this is one of the things that happened. I, I'm like, how in the hell did this guy die from thirst? And then I noticed that, oh hey, there's a dwarf corpse in the wall there. Yeah, you definitely, especially if you have your guys building, constructing walls to make a close off areas, especially little pockets in the walls and such like that, to make sure that they're on the right side of it. And I, I probably made the mistake of not doing the little construction uh, suspension trick on this particular area. But the uh, words are very stupid, so there's a good chance that regardless of what you try to do to prevent their own deaths, they will, you know, wall themselves off or dig themselves on the other side of a trench, which might be in this video. No, it's in the other video. But yet, you have to really watch where you dig and construct things, because there's always a good chance that your dwarves will get themselves stuck, and you end up losing a dwarf for no good reason. So just, you know, make sure you keep an eye on any construction job you've got going on, especially big ones, especially ones that are close to natural walls. And uh, nobody's come up to... Uh, again, after invasions happen, it's kind of hard to get your dwarves to really get back on track for a little while. So, eventually they'll come over and take care of that. Well, let's see. Uh, nothing else important here. Just make sure you take care of all your stuff. And next time around, we will hopefully get to the mechanics.